obviously when you go to the highest level of football, everybody has talent, otherwise you would not be there. So we judge people on the, on the different criteria, which is your, um, how good you are with your team eyes. Can you play in this team? Can you fulfill um, all, the, all the criteria that the club put on you and stuff like that? So often they ask in players, would you play more than two or three positions in the team? Which means that you might not be able to give you 100% because you don't play your position. So it's very interesting uh, answers that the players give because the answers that they give influence how orientated they are towards the team. The team outcome is most important, not you. This all depends where do you go as a footballer from the youth into the seniors. So if you go in the highest league, expectation of you as a youth player is automatically result. It's exactly the same like coach. If you're going into the A-League, the coaches are not sort of a more orientated towards the youth because that's going to influence their chair. So I'm, I'm going to put five or six of you to play for me in the first team. We're going to lose five games, I'm out. So why would I put myself in that position? So what, what that means is if you're going into the highest league to play as a youth, it's going to be a very, very very hard road for you. And I'm not saying this to discourage you going there. Going there because that's going to make you better. It's pointless you being best here and then going into the lower league and become best again, which is easy. You need to challenge yourself to the next level. Um, by going to the next, next league and you being maybe average player for a certain amount of time, don't get discouraged by that because you're going to push yourself to the next level to ex excel. So that means you're going you're gonna to see your weaknesses, what you are missing. Maybe left foot, maybe um, speed, maybe, I don't know, range of things that you don't have to succeed at that level yet. So you need to work on those and get there. Being in the right environment and the club and having the influenced coach at that time is very important. Every single coach in, 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 in this environment here has passion because they're working with the younger generation and influence you to succeed in your career. Um, probably towards end of my career, I was 35, 36, it became harder and harder. The passion was never, never left me the sort of a body let me down. Like, like everybody, everybody here who has retired from uh, either professional, semi-professional football, you know that you're going to the certain age and you're going, oh, how long am I going to be doing this? I can't do this anymore. Because it gets longer and longer recovery. The output is exactly the same, but the recovery gets longer and longer. Where now, reali realistically, you play 10 minutes in the, on the training ground and you need three days to recover. I mean, I know that at this age, you cannot comprehend that, but it will come. So, that's, but the passion is always there. Passion is never left me. It's, uh, that's what, you know what they're saying, when you start early, this game grabs you and never let go. It doesn't matter how old are you. The best thing is the, the, that the player is committed to the cause. So once you're committed to, to that kind of a sort of a culture, the culture in itself is commitment. And what it is, if you're committed to that culture that we're creating, that means that you buy into it, you're going to be committed to the, to the team, you're going to be committed to yourself, and you're going to work hard to get and drive that outcome, which is the team environment. Byproduct of all of that, if you, if you tick all the boxes, is the result on the end of the week or being successful later in the, in the year, or playing the finals, or going to um, Asian championships, or whatever that might be. That's the byproduct of all of that commitment that you do. Very, very important part of that education as a, as a youth footballer was the school. Because early on when we get identified to go into the school, the first ever 
um, sort of a class that you have as a footballer, it's like this, and the coach makes you aware that only 1% of the people in, on this earth from football make professional living. Only 1%. And they make sure that you actually understand that. And they make sure that they tell you that you need to identify why are you going to be in that 1%. School is a must, without a doubt. There is no dream as they said, okay, no, no, I'm going to just concentrate on my football. I'm not going to go to school. Once you do that, you're out of the academy. See you later. Done. Because as a 16-year-old, that you're going from 16 to 18, somebody breaks your leg, you don't have a diploma, you're gone. Working hard on everything, um, every aspect of the game. And, and the s simplest thing that I say is eliminate excuses. You eliminate every single excuse, and the excuse by what I mean by excuse is, oh, okay, I wasn't prepared for, the, for this game this week. Why not? So that's one excuse. Is it training? Is it, is it mental preparation? Is, is it your diet? Is uh, a sleep? Is all the range of different things. Then when you go into training session, how I prepare myself in training session for that game. Did I do a study who I play against? Did I play against these players uh, before? So you do your analysis away from the, from the group, um, and that's, that's, that's practically it. Eliminate excuses um, for you not to succeed. And if you eliminate all of them, there is only one why. You have to succeed. I was the smallest guy, and I said up, up there and, and out there with the, with the, with the kids, um, when we have enough people to play, they always put me in goals. Because they said, look, okay, you're the smallest one, you can't run as fast, and we're going goals because... I'd... In old days, they used to say, look, okay, yeah, how many people... We're playing with 11, but yeah, goalkeeper is just a goalkeeper. That's how they used to think. So they put me in, in goals, and Dave, Dave is not going to ag agree with me, but that's how they used to sort of think about it. Um, they put me in goals, and then later on, later on through, throughout my career, as they... Sort of a missing players to play, oh, okay, yeah, you can come out now. And slowly, slowly. So that's, that's the first obstacle that I had as a young kid growing up. Um, second sort of obstacle was um, as a junior. And as a, as a smallest in that junior squad, you always have to play the positions that they don't have. So Obviously, everybody wants to play striker, or everybody wants to score goals or whatever. So we're going, okay, you are right back, full back. Not necessarily that you wanted to play those positions, but yeah, off you go. You play. So um, in those days, those are the obstacles. Then when, when I came to Australia in 1992, the obstacle was language. Not that I can speak it now, but at that, at that time, I did not speak no word of English. And I remember I started playing at Floriot and they put me to play in the first team on Saturday. Well, I turned up on Sunday, didn't I? Because in, in Europe, the game's on Sunday. So at that time, maybe some of all the guys can remember Mickey Brennan used to be assistant coach at the Glory. He was the coach. And he goes, what happened to you? Well, I was here on Sunday. Well, we played 24 hours earlier and we lost. And he blamed it on me. So those opticals, you can't, but you know what? You, you know that eventually your footballing skill will come through. Those obstacles are just, just there for, for you to overcome. It's nothing that is going to influence end of your career, how your career is going gonna, is gonna to propel.